Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the South Park Center. I'm here with Jesse Adler with her movie Boxes Abroad. Let's take a look at the clip. I started this boxing club in memory of Cheryl Ziegler. She's the one that motivated me to do boxing, so I'm doing this for in memory of her. Hi, we're from Larbra. <laughs> Good, that means you can take a punch. The boxing team is for people that wants to be a part of something. I used to get like anger problems and like fight people at school. Uh, Jesse, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for uh, having me. Thank you for your documentary. For those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis. Sure. Um, the Boxers of Brule is a story about a young Lakota woman named Shayona who starts a girls boxing team on her reservation in Lower Brule, South Dakota. Um, it's in response to her best friend's suicide. Um, her best friend Cheryl was an aspiring boxer. She was her sister by culture and her cousin um, by Western standards. Mm -hmm. and. Um, she, you know, Shayana just felt an urgency to create uh, this team in order to provide something positive for the girls on the reservation and, uh, you know, try to lead, lead the next generation of Lakota uh, Sioux girls down yeah. a safer path. I would go as far as saying it was one of the most important documentaries that I think every American should see, at least, and then go beyond the world. It was so powerful and it was so desperately disheartening to see that there are people that you know within our within our country that are going through so much and just holding on to dear life for each to each other mm -hmm. um and 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 the trials and tribulations they're going through i was so amazingly happy that you made this film you know and you put this message and these wonderful young humans the next generation out there so i really thank you for doing that um where did the inspiration come for you in, in, in creating this documentary? Uh, well, this was my thesis film. Wow, I went I can't to wow. the School of Visual Arts, uh, Masters of uh, Fine Arts program in uh, New York, the social documentary yeah. program. And before that, I was working in Thailand with an organization called Earth Rights International. Mm -hmm. And they do really incredible work, uh, mostly with indigenous communities who are uh, faced with large-scale infrastructure projects like dams and mines, so corporations coming in and um, you know, promising roads and schools and electricity and then uh, breaking their promises, mm -hmm. violating the land and human rights. And um, so as I was doing that work, I was seeing Standing Rock coverage. It was happening about the same time and was just horrified uh, to learn a little bit more about the history of our own native people. and. Yeah. Uh, to see currently the mistreatment, um, you know, being so similar to what's happening in Myanmar and Cambodia and Vietnam and places where we um, really look down upon them for their human rights records. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew I wanted to to share some perspectives of indigenous women, and I wanted it to be positive and, and show their strength and so I heard about what Shiona was doing and we met and just kind of went from there. Shiona is like an incredible, incredible person. Yeah. I don't think she realizes just how much incredible strength she has she in herself and for others and I was, I watched it and I just thought my goodness please just you know the world just got to take care of these beautiful young women who have just just wanting so much to get from life and just need that guidance and support. And here she is going through her own experiences, giving strength to people, her peers and people younger than her. I, I mean, were you, when you were making this, were you just amazed at just like how incredible she is and, and, and how important she was to these young people and to her community? Yeah, I mean, I think I was shocked every step of the way. And, and all of those girls have that same strength. I mean, we would, you know, we'd be making the rounds and picking up girls to go for training, and one of them would hop in the car and say, my mom got picked up last night, and you know, now she's in jail. And they would talk about it for a minute, but then it was like back to jokes and being a 13-year-old girl yeah. and just rolling with it, and they don't, 
I mean, they're just dealing with so much that to me is, is shocking and the way that they handle it is, I mean, resilient doesn't even begin to cover it. No, I mean, the way you captured it as a filmmaker, I literally felt I was, I was there with them. In, I mean, it was, it was like you almost just put us there. It was insane. And, and, and to know that this is part of the United States of America, to, to know that, that these incredible you know, young women are going through so much was just made me angry. Made me, it was heartbreaking. How, how, did, how did it make you feel in that process of making this? Because surely I'm sure you uncovered and discovered many things yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it was really hard. Um, I think, well, I think the, the biggest thing, like looking back on it now, it's just, I watched it the other day, you know, I'm staying with a friend here in LA for the screening and I watched it with him since uh, the pandemic, yeah. you know, affected our screening. But um, it just, the film does not do justice to any of it. It doesn't do justice to the struggle that they go through. It doesn't do justice to their humor and their brilliance. And mm -hmm. I mean, it just, there's just no way to describe it. And, you know, they're, Shayona, all of the girls have, have faced so much trauma that I didn't even want to bring into the story because I didn't feel like I could do so responsibly and, and um, you know, help people process it in a way that would really come through in such a mm -hmm. short time. But there's just so much that needs to be talked about that, um, yeah, we barely, we barely bring up in the film. Um, I, 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 there's so many things that I'm thinking about this film and, and I, I ask, it's just very much prevalent on my mind and I think about all the, the wonderful community that it is. What did, you, what did you want your audience to take from your film? I guess I just wanted more understanding about both w what the situation is within many Native communities in our country today um, and just better understanding of, of that struggle so that, you know, if there's, because uh, some people, like there is some stereotype around addiction and alcoholism and and I don't think there's enough understanding about where that comes from. And mm -hmm. so I think if people could just understand the pain and trauma that is driving that mm -hmm. um, and and learn how to better support healing from within the community, yeah. um, then I think we could you know, help that process move along a little yeah. better. Because um, I truly, I don't think that anyone in Shayona's situation would, would deal with things any differently. No. How do you deal with that pain without yeah. some sort of, you know, numbing or... Right. You just have to figure out a way to cope. And, and that's why I didn't feel like you needed to... It, it's like you didn't even need to show the actual specifications of addiction because you already felt it. I yeah. felt, without seeing anything, I felt, you know, that the, what, what she and people cl around her were kind of going through, you know, it kind of came through the film anyway I felt um, what have you learned from this experience um, that maybe you could share with any particularly documentary filmmakers out there I think just learning to be patient and learning to trust especially if it's a story that is not your own story just learning to trust the characters that you're working with you know the people of mm -hmm. the community and being patient and comfortable with the fact that you are not the expert. Mm. So especially as a first time filmmaker, you know, you're trying to balance staying true to your vision and being a director and what does that mean? But if you're still learning, that that's okay. You don't have to know the story from the start. And I think just really being open to collaboration and um, following the leadership of the uh, people in the story is really mm. important. Well, I mean, this is what's insane. I, when you say I'm first time filmmaker, I'm like, I feel like you've been doing this like 35 years. Like, honestly, I think your vision and what you, you know, gave to us as a filmmaker was amazing. I can't wait to see so much more of your work because you. already you've just, it's incredible. Um, what is next for you, Jesse? Well, we are hoping to do a lot of social impact um, 
events and activities, uh, bringing this film to community centers and to treatment centers and mm -hmm. schools and um, helping um, create conversations around the issues that, that the film deals with, so depression, addiction, yeah. um, suicide. And so just creating that conversation. And then as far as films go, I have some, some ideas that I'm working on, nothing too far along, but um, just kind of starting the research process again and, and mm -hmm. continuing. I, I do want to continue working, uh, especially with indigenous yeah. women um, and sharing their stories because I think we do have a lot to learn from them. A hundred percent. Oh my goodness. Jesse, I love your vision and I can't wait to see much more of your work Thank and of you. course we'll be here to help you on that on that journey to make sure your your movies and your messages get out there as well but thank you very much for this film